So this is a season where everybody's talking about Game of Thrones, even if you don't watch it. The only way to watch it in Australia is via Foxtel. But what happens when Game of Thrones is over? Joining me on the couch today is our resident TV guy, Chris Stead, who's going to break it down and explain what's happening in this world going forward. Chris, why is 2019 going to be such a big year in streaming services? Well, there's just so much going on in 2019, where previously we had a couple of plays in the market. Your Fox mm. tells your stands, your Netflix, obviously, was the big one that came out. This year, we've got KO Sports, which is kind of dynamically changed, disrupted the way that sports are watched here in Australia. Kind of a world first, actually. And we've got these huge players like Disney, Warner, Apple, Amazon, YouTube and Netflix really doubling down on exclusive content. So we're in a position where you could accidentally find yourself creeping into having about seven or eight subscriptions in your house at one time. Now, it sounds confusing and expensive. So how do all these new players in the market, how are they going to affect Foxtel? Well, I mean, Foxtel's obviously come out of a very traditional space that's been in the mm. country now for a couple of decades. Everyone's reasonably familiar with the idea of having cable installed to your house and a set-top box under there. They started moving into the streaming space with Foxtel now, before that Presto as well. Uh, and so that kind of traditional old-school uh, approach to it where we were paying up to $100 a month to get yeah. this content has been very much undermined uh, by the likes of Netflix coming along for $10, $11, $12. Uh, so they're going to be greatly impacted, not just from the perspective of having to repackage what they're offering for perhaps a more aggressive price point, but also the content that will be available will definitely be impacted because when Disney comes into the market, they're going to all that lose all that Disney content. And Disney owns a lot more than just Disney. They own Pixar, they own Star Wars, they own Marvel, and they own Fox as well, which is Simpsons, which has been a stalwart of Foxtel for many years. Warner owns HBO, which is a big thing for Game of Thrones, so is that going to change things? So uh, Foxtel is definitely going to be affected by what they can actually show, but they're also going to start being affected uh, by how much they can price their uh, actual existing packages for. So does Foxtel still have anything to offer? Yeah, I mean, look, Foxtel's still got some uh, great features. It's the only place really where you can easily watch 4K content mm -hmm. if you have a 4K TV. The nature of the set-top box means that you can, uh, you're not relying on Wi-Fi, which is still a weak point here yep, in Australia. Yeah, patchy. Yeah, um, things like Warner coming into the market with its streaming product and what it might do with HBO, that's still a long way off. Mm -hmm. They're talking about a not 2019 release, but that probably won't be in Australia. We don't even know if they're actually 100% coming to Australia yet, or yep. whether they'll just continue to license through Foxtel. So they've still got those benefits. You can still record to the IQ box, of course, which is a big benefit if you want to record free air TV um, or if you want to um, record something and not rely on on demand in high traffic periods like later in the night. I don't yeah. Know yeah, it can get congestion a little issues. juddery then. Yes, yeah, I think Game of Thrones are all seeing a bit of congestion at the moment. Uh, so those are all big strong points mm. to in the Foxtel's favour. Uh, and there's, they've obviously got some exclusive content as well, like your Selling Houses Australia, which is very popular. Uh, we've got Wentworth on there, um, Top Model, a few things like that. So they've still got a lot of content. Mm. Uh, it's just whether or not it's right for individual families now that there's so much choice out there. So when Game of Thrones comes to an end, what should we be thinking about? Well, other than thinking about whoever landed on the Iron Throne, that's definitely what I'll be <laughs> yeah. thinking about. Uh, one of the biggest things to, that's changed the way that we can look at Foxtel over the last, well, since November last year, is the introduction of KO Sports right. into the market here in Australia. So one of the big uh, drivers of Foxtel subscriptions in Australia is its sport. There's over 50 sports available on Foxtel. They've got about 18 channels, mm. uh, a lot of exclusive content, a lot of chat shows, talk shows, highlights. For myself, as a big sports fan, uh, that's the main reason why I've had Foxtel. Right. What KO Sports has done is arrived in the Australian scene as a streaming app that can be through almost all the devices. It's coming to video game consoles, it's on TVs, it's on, well, it's coming to TVs, it's on Apple TV, Android TV, Chromecast, you know, all, all the main ways that you would engage with this content. Uh, but it's taken out the 13 best channels from the sports package, the premium sports package, out of the Foxtel subscription and put it into its own app. So instead of having to buy the pop and lifestyle pack for the base amount on Foxtel and then pay for the sport as a premium on package top on that, top of that, right. you can just pay for sport wow. as $25, which is obviously very, very compelling. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're in a household, for example, where perhaps uh, the, the grander family likes watching Netflix, mm -hmm. uh, however, the uh, there's like sport fans in the family really want to watch the Foxtel sports and you're paying for a whole bunch of Foxtel that you yeah. don't need, there's now an op opportunity to kind of reevaluate and go, well, maybe we don't need Foxtel after Game of Thrones 
or maybe we can change the package that we're on and take sport off it and go strip it right back to something smaller. So there's, mm. there's a, it's definitely a new way to look at it. So, Chris, I've also heard um, that Disney's bringing out its own streaming app. I'm, I kind of am hoping not because I live in a house with two <laughs> girls who watch a lot of Disney. Um, can you tell me about that? Yeah, so Disney Plus is kind of, we knew it was going to uh, be coming for a long time. Yeah. They've officially confirmed now that it'll be coming out at the end of 2019 in the States for six ninety nine US over there, uh, which would probably equate to about $11 here. Yeah. Uh, it'll be competitive with Netflix, I'm sure. However, uh, we haven't got an Australian release date yet, so uh, whether I don't think it'll come out in uh, 2019 here, mm -hmm. but potentially mid-2020. Yeah. Disney Plus will basically be stripping most of the Disney content that we've seen in all the other providers, so... Disney, as we know, has a lot of different content mm. coming out of it. Um, the top ones being Pixar, yeah. Marvel, Star Wars, Disney's own content, uh, and they've just bought Fox. And Fox within Fox, we've got New Line Cinema, I think, in Fox. We've got uh, The Simpsons, Futurama, all those guys, plus like the Predator franchise and Aliens and Avatar and all those are also Fox. So that's a heck of a lot of content that's going to be no longer available through um, Foxtel or Netflix mm. or the things that we're currently watching them on. Uh, we know that Stan, for example, has only licensed its Disney content up to the release date of Disney Plus in the States. Uh -huh. So there's a few of these kind there's of licenses that yeah. are trying to, trying to lapse. Uh, when they will exactly lapse, we'll know closer to the date. So Disney Plus is something that you need to think about. There'll be exclusive content on there we're going to want to see. I think most houses in Australia are going to want it. And that plus Netflix plus KO if you need sport is probably going to be the most compelling package moving forward unless Foxtel can uh, rearrange the way its current pricing structure mm. is or uh, pick up some extra licenses that we don't know about yet. It's a really good point because I hit Disney and I think princesses, uh, again, probably because of my kids, but like you've just illustrated, they own such a huge slice of the market. We're talking about a huge amount of entertainment mm. right across the board. Yeah, well, we're in the middle of a constructing list on Finder at the moment, mm. actually, it lists everything that they've got because yeah. I've just touched on the big ones, the most yeah. popular ones. It goes on and on and on. Just, it doesn't include just entertainment as well. They've got properties in the sports, they've mm -hmm. got properties in... Um, uh, documentaries have got uh, property. I think Fox actually own National Geographic, so I think they've got wow. National Geographic now. Uh, they've also got, uh, like I think CNN might be part of Fox, but one of the big networks over there in the mm. States. So they're pulling all that stuff under the one umbrella and then they've realised that, hey, we don't need to uh, license this off anymore to other yep. people. We can just become a Netflix giant of our own. Yeah. And they do. And that's why we're also seeing that Netflix is spending so much money at the moment on its own content because it knows at that point in time to be competitive, it's going to yeah. have to offer a heck of a lot of stuff that uh, that isn't tied into a Disney or a Warner or um, an HBO. Yeah, so. it sounds like it's going to be a massive game cha game changer when it when it happens. Definitely one to watch. Well, it's definitely going to, we're definitely in a period where we need to look at all of our subscriptions in our house and go, do we can I how much can I really watch? Yeah. Do you know what all of your <laughs> subscriptions I'm, actually? I'm add up laughing because I'm so ashamed because I don't. <laughs> But I think just off the top of my head, we've got Foxtel, the full, the full package. So that's about 100 bucks a month. We've got Netflix. Yeah. Um, we have Apple TV, so we're buying stuff occasionally on that. Um, I know I've got a Stan subscription. <laughs> I did cancel my Amazon one finally. Um, and then, of course, um, I have a Google Music um, and I think maybe an Apple iTunes. I need to have a talk with my partner. We need to do an audit because yeah. um, that's actually quite scary just listing them off. I don't think most people would actually know how many have no. added up over time. You, yeah. you mentioned before a, a creep and yeah. I think we're creeping into that and with so many new services coming and people are so excited about entertainment, yeah. uh, I think it's a lot of people are going to be caught out if they actually jot it down yeah. and they're going to find out, wow, that's a big figure. Yeah, yeah, it's really easy to do, especially with those um, excellent but tricky uh, free offers as well. Um, I'm not very good at remembering to cancel them when they roll into being char charging me every month. But an audit is definitely an order, I think, especially with all these new players coming on the market. So if you want to know more about doing an audit on what you've already got or what you might want to ditch and what you might want to get, um, check out Finder. We've got plenty of information on that. If you're interested in some of the new products, particularly KO and the ones that are coming up, check out the links below. Finder.